We have a functioning binary program. Next, I'd like to deconstruct or disassemble our binary file into assembly code. First, why don't we take a moment to um, pay our respects to the late Kathleen Booth, who wrote some of the very first books on computing. Uh, she lived to the age of 100 um, until 2022. Yeah, just last year, 1922 till 2022. Seen here, loading some paper tape full of ones and zeros into the one, of the one of the very first functional computers she and her husband built. Yeah. Back in the day when you could buy a house and a car with a single income and still have money left over to build a boat or, in their case, a computer. Then later she was like, oh, all these ones and zeros are difficult to read. So she invented the assembly programming language from which was spawned a great many other higher level programming languages which still rely on it to this very day. So we owe her a great debt of gratitude today as she also opened the door for women in the military. And of course, uh, before her groundbreaking work, they had to manually plug cables into an interface, similar to old time telephone operator switchboards. So uh, back to our booting heart there. Yes, um, of course, you know, um, let's say, oh, uh, I'm going to go do something in the hex editor and then go over here, uh, to the text editor and make some changes and then go back to the command prompt and then I want to assemble it again but wait where's my command prompt it disappeared right you know of course uh, we have covered it up with a bunch of windows but Kimio is still running in the background if we want to get out of there you can activate it again you know and of course if you try to activate it by clicking in the window there uh, everything freezes up and here let me show you there's no mouse. If I drag down here, it disappears. Where'd my mouse go? How am I supposed to use a program if I can't look? I can't. <laughs> it's the it's the mouse is disappearing behind it or something. Um, but then over here, look, it says press Control Alt G to release grab, whatever that means. There, there's our mouse. Okay, so we're, we're back in there. So I can just Alt F4 out of there. Fabulous. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see. We're in our command prompt. I got that active because I just clicked on it. Why don't we just pin that to the taskbar because I'm using that pretty frequently these days, you know, and um, shuffle it around a little bit. There, you know, there's my frequent tools. Um, so uh, we got our uh, something we're happy with here. You know, um, we should back that up uh, while we're here, too. Um, good to go. Let's see. Uh, so we know that we can, let me get that out of the way. Uh, we can X copy our T tab into a new folder. We'll call it lessons uh, backslash and give it a new name. What is in there? Well, a bunch of ones and zeros I guess uh, so why don't we just call it ones and zeros dot ASM uh, and yes F for four flavors of fudge please do it there okay all backed up good to go on that so that means now we can use this for other purposes um, and uh, our other purpose was we want to disassemble the code that we generated. So just pretending we don't know this is even here. Let's uh, let's say we uh, there's our binary file, there, a binary that we just opened up. Uh, let's say we don't know what it does. Let's figure it out. Huh? So of course you can uh, starting at the beginning here. If I uh, click on the some of the numbers there, um, there it shows you the binary value. Um, unsigned integer uh, uh, signed integer unsigned integer uh, the same value in 16-bit 24-bit 32 64 128 
yeah, uh, could, could mean different things uh, depending on what architecture you're in. Um, but uh, uh, let me see, scroll down a little bit. Uh, there, if there is a character associated with it, you'll see it there. Um, if not, you get this cube, you know. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, if it was a, a date signature, it would, would be December 30th, 1899. Very interesting. Uh, if it was time, it would be uh, 1994, 101, and 40, oh, 44. Cool. Uh, but what we're interested in is look down here. Uh, disassembly. Ooh, disassembly code. Um, so observe. Um, we happen to know it's move AX, but uh, if we didn't, there it is. Um, and also, if we're looking here, this is in fact a hexadecimal value. Um, it's uh, there's what we're primarily interested in. There's it's larger. We'll, we'll go into that. Um, in hex, uh, it is 0903, but of course up here, you know, it's that bass backwards until um, little Indian architecture, so it's 0309. Okay, but what's nice is. Uh, we can just grab all that. I can just copy. And uh, let's head over to test and just paste that right in there. What else have we got? Um, let's see. So uh, it would be uh, generally command data. Command data. Uh, right? Uh, so. You can, uh, like starting here, you can just use the arrow keys and arrow along. And then down here, you'll see what each of these uh, uh, values uh, may have commands associated with them. But um, like here, we don't really care if it means add CX or anything because we're using it as data, you see. So it depends on the context in which the numbers use. So, okay, so. These are all done, uh, so we can move on to the next one. What's it say? Move BX 004, and here we got 0004 followed by 0000. Okay, so, uh, but whatever. Uh, I'm just going to copy that and just here. We can just kind of do this real quick. I'm going to go paste and then go over here, and that takes care of those. So, I'll go to the next one. Move CX 001. Okay, and we'll head over here and paste that, and then back here. And let's see, that takes care of that. There's the next one, it's command followed by one byte of data. Okay, uh, and that. So that's int, int uh, 16, it's in, in uh, hexadecimal, isn't it? And back to our text and put it right there. What else have we got? Well, the rest is a bunch of padding, um, and you recognize that as the magic number, of course. So we know how to fill the rest of the space with padding and a magic number. We don't have to try and grab it manually out of there. If we, if we did, it would say write a zero, 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 zero. So, uh, we do know, let me see. Um, I can just open the backup folder we just made. Ones and zeros there. There is a boot code. Or right, hang on, I don't need that one either. Uh, open. Our magic number, there it is, there. How obvious. Uh, and just paste it there, there. There, we have successfully uh, decompiled uh, a binary file, some mystery code into uh, working assembly code. Why don't we just uh, verify that it works while we're here. Um, save that and head over here. Let's see, there's NASM, and there's Kimu, and lo and behold, my heart boots for you. Great. Um, we'll get out of there. Uh, so, why don't we break that down a bit more uh, while we're here. We have some raw, disassembled assembly code here. What do we know about it? Let's just state the obvious for starters. I'm going to move a value 
into a register. Yeah. Or really, if you wanted to get a little more technical, move a value into the A register, um, also known as the accumulator. Um, as we know, of course, um, we are actually moving two, two values in there, two bytes. Um, and when I say A register, um, that's going back. Uh, historically, your A register would have been uh, your 8-byte register, 8-bit, uh, I'm sorry, when your computers were 8-bit. Um, and uh, let me just run a little info here. Uh, since you know um, what computer science course would be complete without a professor drawing some squares up on a whiteboard, you know. And so uh, in order to inflate my credibility, uh, there's my squares. And of course, you know, I've, I've written, drawn eight, because uh, it's eight bit, yes. Um, uh, you could think of them more as containers into which you can put some values, you know. Uh, back in the day, your eight bit register would have been referred to as the a register. You also had your B, C, and D registers, uh, but we're not going to go into that. There's more registers these days. Um, so your A register, um, when they went 16-bit, they added another 8 bits, uh, another byte, and that became your AX register, which now had an, a higher byte and a lower byte, a higher a register, A H, and a lower A L, right? Um, so, and of course, as we know, that's little endian, so it's reversed, you know. Um, so here, you know, um, this value alone would have been eight bit. Um, or it is eight bit from zero to two fifty five. Uh, this much would be. 16-bit, uh, this much is 32-bit, and there's the entire 64-bit value, which HXD hex editor suggested since we are working in 64-bit. Um, I mean, we are using a 64-bit processor, but uh, technically uh, we are only working in 16-bit. So this, these bits are kind of extraneous and irrelevant. Not really necessary. Let me just kind of trim it down a bit there, okay? So here we are passing two separate values, as we know. A 3 and a 9 is a single value. Uh, it gets flipped. Let me, um, just to clarify things a little bit here, if I may. I was just estimating if this should be. 72, B8, B8, there, okay, it's 72, okay, there, so now this is the same code written three different ways. Um, observe here in the first example when I hard-coded some values, uh, poked them directly into registers, I wrote a 3 and a 9, and guess what, I got back a 3 and a 9, because I am explicit, explicitly writing uh, bytes uh, in the order in which they're received. Um, but then, of course, if I try to pass a whole value, it gets flipped. Yeah. The 9 and a 3 becomes a 3 and a 9. You know. So another way to do it, um, as I just showed you earlier, the AX uh, register also um, can be broken down into the higher byte and the lower byte, each containing the 3 and the 9. Let me just copy this and go um, undo, 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 until I get back there. Uh, you know. um, so this could, in fact, be that. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, comment that out now. Mm -hmm. So we have broken it down now into two parts. Um, now, this hexadecimal value, let me show you. I'm not sure if you're aware. I'm going to copy that hexadecimal value. Um, if you go to your Windows calculator 
and you know here, here you have your standard mode uh, it says up here but if you click here you have programmer mode Ooh. so I can go to hex like that and then I'll just paste the value I just copied 903 and it tells me it's 2307 see so instead of this hex value I could have just as easily have said in decimal 2307 but what is good is that to me you know this now just becomes an arbitrary jumble of numbers whereas in hex see uh, the first part um, from 0 to 255 uh, or um, more specifically from 0 to 255 uh, is represented there and the, the lower you know, lower higher the higher byte you know is represented there from 0 to 255 so you can see uh, in some cases it is actually advantageous to uh, use a hexadecimal value like that because you're working in these 16-bit chunks you know uh, so you know although in these cases here um, this 9 you know could just as easily be a decimal value there's no reason it needs to be a uh, hex value you know, it's just easier to read uh, for me I don't know about you um, so there let me just uh, I'm gonna save that oh uh, but, but before I do go back um, observe though um, here like I said I've, I've said it th the same thing three different ways o over there and um, So this value, redo, 72, there, okay, there. So this, 3.9, 3.9 is the same as this, 9.3 turns into 3.9, right? Um, and here, if I put AH and AL separately, I don't, get the same code in assembly however it does go into the same register in the processor you follow um, so here uh, b8 let me go down here meaning move ax as we know uh, ba b8 meaning move ax but here b4 move the higher register of uh, I'm sorry did I say bx move ax here B4, meaning the higher byte of uh, the AX register, and B0, the lower byte of the AX register. It comes across differently from here to there in assembly, although to the processor, all of these three examples are the exact same thing, to make a very, very, very long story short. Okay, so... Kind of felt that needed to be clarified somewhat. Um, what we do know here, um, we so, like I said, uh, it's not really the A register; it's the AX. But I affectionately still recall, you know, call them the A registers. Yeah, A register, B register, C register in 16-bit referred to in. Um, in assembly code as AX, BX, and CX. Okay, copy that. Uh, so this is your B register, right? Um, this one, your uh, C register. And um, here we're just going to call and interrupt, which, as we know, is uh, basically just telling it to do it right there and i could just as easily you know put a comment in here and say magic number but yeah, we all by now we know what this is just to look at it right uh yeah so there you go um at this point juncture we have successfully um marked up our um disassembled assembly code. Mm.
we can move on to some other things.